those who are joining us uh, from home and let us prepare hearts and minds uh, for our Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed on to the other side. Let us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to love as God loves us. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 9 to 14. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of the body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors, when you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next, we'll read Psalm 25 responsibly. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those to be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All our paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your company and your testimonies. The second reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossia, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins the word of the lord thanks be to god
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do that and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, if there was any time we needed to hear the parable of the Good Samaritan, it's now. In the midst of our active, busy, and turmoil of the world, we keep hearing things from such places as Japan, Sweden, Highland Park, Uvalde, Texas. And we shake our heads in disbelief and confusion as to what seems to be going on. But back in the small pages of the newspaper, is a little story this last week about three policemen who received appreciation and recognition for saving a driver who was trapped in his car that was in flames. They couldn't get the door open, but they broke the window And the three of them, in the midst of a burning car, were able to pull this individual out of the car and save his life before it erupted into flames. Then a little later in the newspaper and on that little uh, thing you carry around, now that you can't leave home without. There was a story about an accident on a highway where a car overturned into a ditch on the side of the road that was filled with water. The water quickly engulfed the passengers in the car. And volunteers, pulled off of the highway, rushed to the car, 
and we're able all together push the car upside down and permitted the rescue of those inside. The policemen nor the volunteers that did these things didn't check whether the person was black or white, did not check out first whether they were Democrats or Republicans. They didn't care of the fact that maybe by stopping and helping these individuals, they would be late for their business meeting. Nor, from the video of the car that tipped over in the creek, did they care about their fancy clothes that they had on, for they plowed right into the creek and helped push the car over. The parable of the Good Samaritan is critical for the time of Jesus when he wrote it. Those people needed to hear that message. Reaching out and touching others. And you and I in the present day need to hear the message over and over again to remind us of Christ's message. Reach out and touch others that are in need. Jesus was very blunt. Then, fella, if you want to live a life according to what the Lord would want you to do, then go and do it. Pretty blunt. When I read that parable, I'm a little bit personally uneasy about probably it was a rabbi that passed by on the other side. But it was a religious leader, anyway. Why did he go by? Hadn't he heard in the sunny synagogue and on the street about what helping other people is all about? And then I put myself in the place of that rabbi. Wow. I just spent the whole morning in Hanover at a pastor's meeting. Spent the whole morning trying to make some plans for reaching out to the community with the good news of Jesus Christ. I came out of that meeting, ran over to Arby's and grabbed one of those great brisket sandwiches. No, I'm not getting paid. I wolfed down the sandwich and then off to York Hospital to visit two of my members. Then from there, I'd better get home and get dinner or I would hear about it. So I rushed home, grabbed dinner, and then checked the watch and said, oh, good grief, I've got to get over to the church because I have to pick up a whole bunch of kids and get them over to Camp Nawakwa for a retreat. On Route 30, there's an accident. And I stop to check on what's going on. There was Terry McCandless setting up cones, saying, you can't go up this road. Oh, good grief, I'm going to be late 
Now I've got to make a detour to get over to church. So I rush around the cones and head for the church. I was in a hurry. I didn't take time to even ask Terry, hey, do they need any help? Is anybody in need of a pastor? No, I was too busy. I was in a rush. I had things to do and places to go. People waiting on me here at the church. How was I going to find time to help at an accident? I had my schedule that I had to follow. The parents were going to be all grouchy and grumpy because I wasn't there to pick up the kids on time and the kids were anxious to get over to the retreat. And then... I read the parable of the Good Samaritan. Is your life hectic? Are you wound up about your schedule and what had to be done and has to be done? Were you uptight about what's going on in the world, in your own family? Are we too busy in our life? Even with all these modern conveniences, we still can't find time to reach out and offer a helping hand. The parable is alive today in trying to teach us to be compassionate neighbors. It teaches us to provide indiscriminate mercy to people not just around us, but over in Ukraine and over in the Sudan, to be concerned about our neighbors wherever they may be. We've got to listen to the parable and take some time in our busy schedule to do little things to help those around us. You don't realize how much a get well card means to a person laying in the hospital. You sometimes don't comprehend how much a card means to a woman who is coming of 100 years old. Just the card. A telephone call. Yeah, on, on that little thing that buzzes when you least want it to. Just a phone call to say, hi, how you doing? Hi, congratulations on the birth of your first great-grandson was welcome news. All is well. Our life is so packed with stuff up here and on the list of things that need to be done that we don't take time until we are in a situation where you and I are appreciative of a phone call or a card or somebody saying, hey, can I help you stack that wood? Can I help you trim your trees? Can I help you pack, even though I'm disappointed that you're moving? Family, job, personal life, the world situation, and our future 
are we going to have enough to retire? Taking time for others in need often takes last place on the list of things that need to be done. The news is filled with tragedies of the world. In the small print, however, there are millions of people around the world who still remember the parable of the Good Samaritan and are reaching out and enfolding their neighbors with love, compassion, understanding, and help in times of need. Praise God that not everybody has forgotten the parable of the Good Samaritan. be seated. Let us confess our faith by means of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
resurrection of the dead and everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all in need. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill your church with compassion that we bear the fruit of your healing mercy to a broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your ways and teach us your paths of justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial, and religious profiling and discrimination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come near to all in need. Orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty. Hope where there is despair. Love in the face of neglect. Comfort where there is death and healing in illness. We pray for Wayne Trump Sr., Alma Groover, Sherry Fieser, Faye and Carl Groover, John Smith, Brenda Groover, Caleb Trump, Nancy and Jerry Primarkle, Chris and Ron Schwartz, Bob Markle, Penny Sidora, Grace Snyder, Samantha Zorbaugh, Herb Smith, Gloria Snyder, John Free, Camera Elise, Annette Steiger, and Steve. For those in prison, especially Patrick, Henry, Keith, and Brandon. Are there others for whom we pray, either silently or out loud? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord of God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within the cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness. Through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile and into the future. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, and with us now. On the night in which he was betrayed, he had taken bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do as often as you eat it, in remembrance of me. And on that same evening, after he had given thanks, he took the cup, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remember his, remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in your gathering, within this meal, among your people, and throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, and without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Time is the kingdom, power, and glory, forever and ever. Deuteronomy tells us that God's word is not far off, but is in our mouths and in our hearts. 
Jesus, like the Good Samaritan, doesn't keep his distance, but instead he comes in close to love, to heal, and to save. This is his table, and he calls all of us to come and be fed. Come, not because you are worthy, but because he has set a place for just you. Come, trusting that he is not far off. He is here in bread and wine for each one of you.
given for you. The body of Christ given for you. His body given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. Mary Lou given for you. Body of Christ, James given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Good to see you. Body of Christ given for you. This body, the power and the love of Christ died. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Given for you. Love the body of Christ. Given for you. 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 Body of Christ. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you unto everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now, send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have an announcement a couple announcements from linda i'm to express abundant thanks for the bounteous abundance of the plethora of canned and boxed items which will be given to the harvest of hope food pantry well done uh, she says we are now collecting clothing children sizes three to adults small uh, including shoes coats and then school supplies and backpacks also for the back to school clothing program that will be held in August. Donations may be placed in the narthex starting next week. Also, Friends of Paradise is on Tuesday of this week. Uh, they're prepping tomorrow, Monday, and if you can help for an hour or two, that would be great. They're going to start about 9 o'clock. And Tuesday's Friends of Paradise program, she says, would not be one to miss. Several residents from New Life for Girls will be joining, uh, coming to share their amazing, life-changing stories, as well as sing a choir. So good. We, we donate a lot of stuff to Good, not, good Life, oh my goodness, New Life for Girls. So I think sometimes we're not quite sure what they do there, so this would be a good opportunity to find out how helpful they really are. And I, you know, in the office I get their letters that from like testimonials from the girls who have been residents there and have truly turned their lives around from like gutter to you know back on the couch back back in life and, and being productive and they're um, it's a really good program uh, let me see uh, yeah it's in Dover New Life is a nonprofit residential Christian rehab ministry the special offering in July goes toward this essential organization where lives are changed and transformed in a safe and loving environment so come around to, on Tuesday around 1045 to show them our wonderful Paradise family who supports them. And, of course, there's food. So you're welcome to stay for a full picnic spread, she says. Thank you. I just wanted to bring a brief update on how Sammy is doing. Uh, she is slowly recovering, making progress. Uh, the primary emphasis now is to try to get her to walk, which she cannot do yet. The left side would, was affected more with brain damage than the right, and so getting the left leg to cooperate with the right leg is becoming a little bit of a problem for therapists, so we're working on it. But she's improving, and we're deeply thankful for your prayers and one of these days, we hope to have her here to say thank you and uh, well-being. So thank you all. The God of peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen.